are calling our Parks Commission meeting to order for March 2024. And our first order of business is um, approval of minutes, but we do have um, a citizen who has comments for the minutes. Patrick Cheney. Um, so I am, I am requesting that the minutes be edited it is regarding my own comments, so I'd like them to be clear for whoever may read this. Uh, there's a paragraph under approval of minutes in your February minutes that is about uh, park names. And that really doesn't belong in that section of approval of minutes. It belongs in public appearance, non-agenda items. That is a copy and paste for the January minutes but the January meeting wasn't within the 60-day comment period. The February was, so I like that it's in there, but it needs to be in public appearance, not in agenda items. There's another uh, line in public appearance, not in agenda items about this same matter. I would like them to be a little more uh, clear on this and, and say, yeah, and say that uh, I was uh, opposed to the Hartung suggested name of Armstead Park for the reasons that I gave, uh, and I suggested the various other names there about Blaney Farms Park. So if that could be together in one paragraph, but under public appearance, non agenda items, I would like that better. And uh, let's see, in uh, 5A, it has a note from me that I registered to speak, but I did uh, say my comments all in one, but based on 5A and 5B. So if you could just extend that to say registered to speak on 5A and 5B. Can you, would you leave that with me? I'll make your copy and get it back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, a motion to approve the minutes? Second. Second. Okay. And discussion. So what the adjustments are is the under two for January. Uh, that the the second the third paragraph under two gets shifted down to three, and then three. Two things combined. And they're combined. It's a February minute, so. Okay, yes. Okay. Anything else from anyone? And that 5A, 5B. Yep, I've got it here. Okay. What, what's on 05, oh, 5A, five, five and 5B? Five okay. Those in favor? Amended. Aye. 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 Okay, as amended. The minutes are approved. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, public appearances for non-agenda items. And we have Molly Scheumann, 2387, Kathleen. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Okay, so... Um, it's just come to my attention that there was, uh, for the planning, for the relocation of the Hillside Heights Park, that there was no previous master plan for the park that stood before November of 2022, probably because it's so like old, built like decades ago, right? Um, and uh, we've been all been on an email chain um, where I learned that um, the Parks Department is assuming that when that park was created, the staff um, had, at that time, had determined the best location for the playground, basketball court, volleyball court, and open play space with consideration of the natural layout of the space, um, and that there is no plan for a master plan for the relocation of the park now. Um, and so I'm just coming from a point of learning with these processes, but also a point of concern that without a basic um, comprehensive plan that's also public 
um, to the community that we're going to put ourselves in the same position we found, found ourselves in in November of 2022. Um, and so it's my hopes that the Community Commission and Parks Department can work together to ensure that the second relocation and construction of the park goes smoother than the last one. Um, and so I wanted to uh, propose or suggest a comprehensive public document that shows that there was uh, research and thoughts put into these areas. Um, the first two being kind of the biggest concerns that the neighborhood has, um, the environmental considerations, um, looking at the impact of new, the new park and um, incorporating sustainable design principles to minimize environmental degradation, degradation, sorry. <laughs> Um, consider factors such as um, stormwater management, especially with the stormwater ponds being downhill from it. Um, elevating the park and the basketball court to be above the stormwater routes, habitat preservation and native landscaping. Um, the maintenance and management plan, um, I think it will be important to establish a, pan a plan for ongoing maintenance and management of the park including staff requirements, maintenance schedules, safety protocols, and community engagement strategies, um, a needs assessment of the park, uh, information on infrastru infrastructure and utilities, accessibility and inclusivity, the phasing and implementation strategies of relocating the playground, um, the funding and the budgeting, as well as legal and regulatory compliance. I went into more details about the points above in the email that I sent to everybody on February 28th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're at uh, review and approve agenda, a motion to review our agenda. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Is there any um, suggestion? to tinker with our agenda. Seeing that there is none, um, those in favor to approve our agenda as written, say aye. Aye. Okay, there's probably an eye coming in from over there. That carries. So we are to item 5A, which is Library Story Walk 2024 proposed McKee Farms Park. And we have Minda Maurer here, and Scott can talk to us about it. Um, oh, I'll start with a motion to approve. Anyone want a second? Second. Okay. So, Scott, whatever you want to tell us. Yep. And this Minda. is, well, Minda from the Fitchburg Library staff is here. Uh, this is the, the story walk. Well, what do I want to say? Um, what, what do they call it? Um, Phase two, if you would, that we kind of learned through through the first phase some 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 maintenance issues mm -hmm. and some other issues. So they they're coming before us to to ask our approval to do an updated uh, story walk at McKee Farms Park. So yep, version two. No, version two. That's yep. what yep. I was looking for. <laughs> two point oh. Two point oh. I'm mainly here to ask answer any questions questions if you have any hopefully the information we provided was enough yeah it was nicely done so I've, I've been through it it's wonderful um, I love it um, question that I have is do we have any metrics on how many people look at that on a daily or monthly or yearly how, how for the how engagement that? piece of yeah. it yeah um, at this point, we have anecdotal evidence mm -hmm. from people like you or many people that will say how much they enjoy it. That is a possibility that we can look into for the future about sort of trying to, um, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, people will come to the library and tell us, yeah. but there's, there's different ways that we could possibly measure that. Yeah. Trail camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just from my own experience, um, I used to work at Permega and would walk through the park to get to work, and that was the first time I'd ever seen um, uh, a, that type of uh, um, uh, ex experience, and I just thought it was wonderful. It was, yeah, and, and every time I'd walk through it, I would encounter different parts of it, so I, I just liked the engagement of it and being outside. So it was, 
it was really creative. So I like it. It's great. Thanks. So any other questions? It does look like there's more posts. Does that mean that maybe, or maybe I'm wrong, but does that maybe open it up to more books? Is that kind of the thought so process? So there's going to be more stations. Um, so it used to be attached to the light poles, yes. light posts. So now it will be freestanding. Um, it's through a company in Wisconsin that manufactures store walks, and those, um, it will be on concrete pads. So there's more stations that allows us to have a longer book in the, uh, in the park, and this will also allow us the opportunity to have it year-round. I think being freestanding on their own kind of makes them a little more prominent, too. They'll stand up yeah. a little bit more and capture a little bit more attention. Anything else? There's your two. There's your two. Uh, uh, this is Heidi. Um, just a, a thought, and, and maybe you already have this, but um, I'm wondering if maybe QR codes on the pages, you know, would allow people an opportunity to sort of scan on their phone, go to another web page, and that might also be a way for you to to sort of measure the impact that you're having, the amount of visits that you're getting. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah, that's a very good one. We'll have to look into that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Heidi. I apologize. I did not see well, that's what's uh, blinded by the lights, I think, here. Mm -hmm. But uh, anybody else? Comments? Questions? All right. Then all those in favor, say aye. 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 No opposed? The motion aye. Please. Thank you. Thank Pretty you, everyone. Thanks. Okay. 5B, the River Food. <laughs> Pantry Community Event in Southdale, and I know that Helen Osborne Sanatis, or Sanatis, if I'm, she'll tell me how I've mismanaged her name when, <laughs> we'll start with a motion. I'll move to approve the project or the plan. Uh, is there a second? Second. Defer. So, Scott, is there anything you want to say in advance, or should we just go well, directly? Well, certainly, to certainly a shout out to, to Helen and, and the River Food Pantry for, for bringing this event to Southdale, and we're, we're certainly, as the Parks Department, are, are there to, to do whatever whatever support you may need, Helen. We're, we're more than more than willing to help, so you just, just let us know. Okay, thank you so much. And yes, you were very close. My last name is Osborne Sonatus. That's, that's what I get for hyphenating it. Um, but, um, but yes, that we were, so as we've been able at the River to expand our munch program, our mobile meal program, um, beyond Madison into Fitchburg, uh, we, you know, we're looking at other ways to help engage residents and make sure that they know about Munch, but also the river services as we do serve all of Dane County. Um, and then as we were talking through how we might be able to do that, a community event just kind of came into the conversation. And so that's why right now we have, I think, nine other agencies um, confirmed to table at the event. And, you know, we'll have a fun activity, kind of like a passport item to help encourage people to visit all the vendors. Um, shout out to, to, to Minda. <laughs> she will, she'll be there with the library. Um, but, yes, uh, I'm, I'm happy to share more specific information as we know it at this point or answer any questions, what, um, whatever is most helpful. Okay, thanks. Anyone have questions right now? No, I don't. I just... I... I want to say thank you. It's a wonderful, wonderful program. And then, as you've stated, as you learn more, you'll be letting Scott know, and he always is able to forward things on to us as they come in through to him. So yes, absolutely. I'll be, I'll be happy to, um, you know, as as we get more agencies um, agreeing to join us. And then, you know, we do act, we do have a DJ um, who's willing to in-kind his services. And so I'm working on the sound permit. Thank you, Scott, for that connection. Um, and then as, you know, and I, I did want to ask, you know, we're looking at uh, getting some kind of pop-up awnings or tents just to have some shade. Is, is that permitted in the park to have something, of course, not, not staying on the ground, but you know, it might puncture the grass, the the posts from the awnings. No, that that's certainly that's certainly allow, uh, allowable, Helen. The the only thing that I I get concerned about is 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 it a big tent or is it just a, a smaller tent? Um, you know, where we'd have to call Diggers Hotline, or is it just something a smaller 
10 by 10 tent with, with small stakes, that, that's fine. And even if it's a, a bigger tent, we would just need to get diggers hotline to make sure that the people that are installing the, the, the tent are, are safe. Of course, yes, great point. Um, and as we're looking at different awnings, um, that'll definitely be something that we explore is, you know, how, how deep will this go and do we need to call diggers hotline? Is that part of their installation process or is that something we handle on our side? There's a shelter there as well, right? There, because the there shelter is. Oh, mm -hmm. is that something that would be helpful, or is it kind of because it's set back? Is well, it that, really? I kind of leave that up to okay. up, up to Helen. Certainly, they can utilize the shelter if if they if they'd like. That's for that's for sure. Yeah, if if we're able to use the shelter, I I that that would be really helpful. Yep, you'll you'll have use of the whole whole park, Helen. Shelter included. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, anything else? All right, then all those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Uh, the motion carries, no opposed. Thank you very much. Thanks, Helen. Helen. Thank you all. All right. Uh, we have item C, resolution R2224, amending the 2024 capital projects fund budget for Hillside Heights playground relocation. So, um, a motion to approve first. I'll move to approve. A second. Second. <laughs> I second. Okay. Scott, what's the update? Well, and, and, and as uh, the CIP in 2022, uh, we had uh, uh, dollars in there to replace the Hillside Heights playground, which we did do. Uh, in the summer of 2022, uh, after the playground was located, we did receive feedback from uh, from the residents concerned that it was too uh, too close to the the stormwater facility. So what we did then is we uh, put up a fence, you know, first thing to to make sure that uh, they felt safe. Uh, what we also did is we had a, a, a presentation in December of 2023, uh, and we. We offered a couple options on what could potentially be done, and uh, the neighbors were, were in agreed or favorable to the idea of relocating uh, the playground uh, back to the original location, if you would. So what we did is we received three prices, three quotes to do that, uh, and the lowest uh, qualified quote was for $12,700 from Madison Commercial Landscaping. So. That's what, in, in order to, to get the funding, they needed to do a, a budget amendment and move some, some dollars from a CIP to another CIP. Uh, and when this does get to the council, it will need a, a two-thirds two vote, which uh, is indicated on the bottom there. So the one question I had that we talked about, but just at first, the only thing I saw was the 41,000 and I, wasn't quite sure what to think about that. <laughs> but the 12700 moves the equipment, and the balance goes into a fund that you can use for other projects. And so there's nothing specific in mind for that? Or? No, it, what, what it is is it basically is, is balancing out the, the neighborhood park improvement account, which we had 41155 so that was transferred to the park system improvement account, which is 6259. And that's a CIP that has all the different park projects that we have in there. And that, that continues from one year to the next. The balance uh, goes to the next year. So they placed it, they moved it from the neighborhood park improvement CIP to the park system improvement uh, CIP, which, yeah, then there'll be a balance that will allow us to continue to do to do these kinds of these kinds of projects in, in the parks. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay. kind of balances out and, and Heidi's got a, a question. Oh thank you. Heidi. Hi. Hi. Um so it, there just seems to be such a reticence to what I think is the simplest solution is just using the fencing that we have and putting that there. And I guess I'm wondering why why the the option to move the park equipment and risk you know 
breaking something. Um, and then you're still going to have that whole area open. What What is the objection to just putting the fence up that we already have? I've got to believe that's got to be cheaper. It, it certainly it certainly would would be uh, a Heidi, but we did we did get together with the, the neighbors and the consensus was uh, even with the, the costs uh, included that the best the best solution was to relocate the the new playground in the in the area of the existing playground. Uh, so that that was certainly brought up Heidi and, and discussed, but at the end of the day, this was. The consensus of the of the best solution to the uh, to addressing the concerns that the residents had. Now, so the, the the neighbors agree that it's it's better to move the equipment than to leave both pieces of equipment there and put a fence up. That, that's correct. But now I went to the meeting that was called for the neighbors at that this. Uh, city administration held and they there they were just told we are moving this it wasn't I think the neighbor I can't speak for them but my understanding was the wish to move the equipment was not the neighbors it was our city administration and at, at this point it's all horses out of the barn but yeah but that is how it happened. And I don't, I can't. At the request of the neighbors. The neighbors wanted, oh. <laughs> I was given that. I just was also at the meeting. And if I'm able to yeah. talk, would be happy to talk on behalf of the neighbors. Sure, come on up. Yeah. Yeah, so the request of the neighbors was, um, and this is all in writing, um, and was recorded at multiple commission meetings. The request of the neighbors was to place a fence on the south side of the retention pond between the park and the pond. Um, we didn't even know it was an option to move the park until we met in December of 2023 and we were told that we had three options, three, two or three options to move the new playground equipment to where the old playground equipment is. So it was not the neighbor's decision to relocate the equipment. Um, however, we were in favor of it when it was presented to us. Um, but the initial proposal from the neighborhood, which is all in writing, is to put a fence up. And we were told that that is not the it's not solving the core issue um, that a fence um, provides other liability issues such as maintenance and safety and that kids can climb a fence. So um, the core issue would be moving the park. However, there was no like vote on whether to put a fence versus move the park where the neighbors initiated that decision. It was initiated by um, Chad and and um, Scott from our point of view. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. I'll thank you. I, I also wonder, uh, I'm sorry, I was also gonna ask um, because um, the earlier speaker had spoke about an overall plan um, which I tend to agree with. I mean, I, I, I don't know how how detailed the plan needs to be, but it seems to me that, it, you know, it, it should, we should have some sort of idea of, okay, this happened. This isn't quite what, the way we wanted it to happen. So now we're going to do this with the goal being the next 10 years, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. And I'm wondering if that has been anything has been put into action for that well one of the things that came to my mind just when um molly was speaking originally was that um a maintenance plan is part of the ask and but right now talking about 
all of that is way outside the boundary. I'm glad everyone's gotten a chance to say things, but things that I that come to my mind are outside the boundaries of voting for this budget item. So I, I'm in favor of talking about it a little bit more at another time. Mm -hmm. But um, does that sound fair, Heidi? Well, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I just, I, I just fear that sometimes, you know, when it's like, okay, well, we're just gonna do this, we're gonna put a Band-Aid on it, and then we'll deal with the rest of it later. And then, you know, another hole pops up, and okay, well, we're just gonna patch that hole too. And so, if if this is step one, and we're making a commitment to then put a plan together to deal with all the other issues that have been brought up, you know, like the maintenance plan and all all of, all of the other things, then yes, I would agree with you on that. But I I don't want this just to be the band aid, and then we forget about it. Right. Well, and the twelve thousand seven hundred is this company removing the old equipment and putting the new equipment roughly in the same area. It may not be exactly, Scott, is that to be determined? We're thinking in the, generally in the same location of the existing playground. Okay. And the basketball pad is gonna be replaced? That, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. my, my, my other comment is whether 12,000 that's here also makes sure that the area is graded so that the water that comes in off the street and the properties that are at a higher elevation, then there's the playground and then there's the pond. That right. we're spending the money so it's not, so it's, so it's nobody sorry later that, gee, it's too bad we didn't do this or do that. So um, is that something that Madison Commercial Landscaping is going to do? No, they're just going to, Take the existing playground and, and relocate it where we where we want them to relocate. Okay. You know, they're and, and typically the, the parks department will assist with, with these kinds of things and make sure there's drainage and, and those kinds of things. So, so that certainly can be in our in our thought as we as we relocate the, the, the playground. If it's decided to relocate it. I, I Yeah. I, I mean I I think it's it's going to be relocated. That all has been decided. But um, and I, Patrick, can I throw in a question? Sure. This is not uh, looking to put fault on something, but I'm just curious uh, who um, actually put that new playground equipment in the ground. If it was the playground installer company that brought it and installed it, or was it parks crew that installed it in the ground? No, it was the uh, well the. The, uh, the the company that we purchased the playground structure from they yeah. they have contracted installers that, that install the playground for them. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wondered if that opens any options or possibilities there as far as you know moving it and reinstalling it. Well, that's what the that's what we received a price for. Yeah, to, this, yeah we're, was that the same company that installed it, or was it no, totally different? No, it was a diff It's a different company. Yeah. Yeah, I have no quarrel with who's going to do the work or what the price is, but I just wanted to know what was included. No. And so um, I... But certainly the, the thought of making sure that that yeah. happens. At the very least to make sure that it's it's um, not in... Not in a... I don't, it's not, where the water sheets would go. Off, off the... Right, off the right. Yeah, so it's... Because it just took to my inexperienced eye. There's high ground, and there's low ground, and everything else is in between. Well, certainly the that sheets off the off the road and, yeah. and those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and then just the other topics raised here. I don't want to let those die, and we'll talk later about ways to work together on other concerns for the park. Seems to me that that's a discussion for the system as a whole, because that's certainly not the only. Um, old park with no um, historical or future plan. So yeah. I think that that's probably not something that is fair to address on a single park basis. It's probably a system-wide um, issue and that the commission and the city need to decide what the best approach is because there certainly aren't the resources to make 
a plan, um, you know, either either existing or future plan for all of the parks in our system that don't have one um, right now unless our budget changes. And um, I, I'm in favor of that idea, but given the fact that we've all probably recently been taking surveys about referendums and things that we can't afford, <laughs> that might not be an appetite for that. Um, uh, but it's a really great thing to, to work toward so we can have a conversation at some point about the best way to do that. Because, I mean, if you don't map what's there, you, you can't make appropriate plans for what to do in the future, and things like this can happen again. So. Well, the other thing that brings up is an equity piece of limited resources and making sure that we're spending money on an equal basis. If we're moving things and providing one option when we could have a, a less expensive option to make sure that those dollars are spent equally, especially in other areas that we need, uh, need to uh, invest in as well. So um, yeah, the, the thing I can think of is a equity action plan that the city of Madison has in their parks department. So that's why I want to push, you know, we brought the email today uh, around the open space plan that we can formulate some, some strategy around an equity action plan. All right. Um, go ahead. Well, I, so for the fence conversation, I guess just to go back to that, I guess looking at the previous meet, email from Molly in December, it does look like potentially it was Chad that recommended the fence. So is it, and it looks like it because of safety concerns. So is that just, I mean, is that the answer <coughs> that the fence is not being pursued because of safety concerns and that it was decided that relocation was the better path? Right. Okay. Well, in, in maintenance of the fence and ongoing okay. maintenance of the fence. Certainly, certainly the, at first, you know, short term, it would be less expensive, but mm -hmm. in the long term of maintaining a, along the fence and in replacement of the fence. So that was, you know, kind of was the, was the reasoning for the, for the additional options. And all the other existing play equipment will now be taken down. It will be, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 it because was originally going to be left in place because it, it's it's older, but some of those pieces of equipment, there's nothing wrong with. Or was it always going to come down? It was always going to okay. come down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. All of those in favor of this this motion? Say aye. 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 Okay. That is approved. Uh, D. This. Oh. By a, a resolution R3624 approving professional services for Tower Hill Park shelter renovation project. A motion to approve? Come on, Katie. So moved. <laughs> Second. And Chris has got, Christopher has all the seconds, just about. Let's do cut and paste on that. Go ahead, Scott. It, it, this is a part of our uh, CIP plan for 2023. And actually, we were able to secure some ARPA TID closure uh, dollars to renovate of the shelter at Tower Hill. It's been on the list for uh, quite some time, and actually with the ARPA TID closure, we were able to, to secure some dollars. Uh, we did uh, seek professional services to help us with the, uh, with the planning. Uh, we did receive three proposals. Uh, staff uh, did review the proposals and is, uh, is recommending Angus Young for this work. And uh, the price was 34020 but we did add a contingency for a total of uh, 37500 uh, And Angus Young, uh, if you're familiar, they helped us with the McKee Farms Park Shelter renovation way back with forced air and windows, uh, along with the McGaw Park Shelter renovation, and then they actually did the, the new shelter at Hugo Jamestown. I will tell you that our, our budget is $325,000 for this project. Uh, we, we're hoping to have everything ready to go in June and, and actually get it built uh, by the end of the year. We, we are going to reserve or allow Tower Hill to be reserved through the month of August, but after that, then it's going to be, um, we're going to keep it open so that we can, we can get going on the construction. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> I have a question.
question about, in general, the, the council has approved directive that uh, solar panels are placed when buildings are done and redone. Is this going to be subjected well, what, to them? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate uh, the, the benefit of having solar panels here. Uh, within the, the contract from Angus Young, they did uh, agree to do some of that research, but certainly if there uh, is a decision to do solar panels, there's going to be additional costs for engineering and, and also for construction, because they'll typically need to, to put a little bit more structure into the roof. Uh, we have spoke to Phil. Uh, Phil is our sustainability specialist here at the city, and he, uh, with it just being a, you know, a shelter that's seasonal, uh, with really not much of an electrical pull, if you would. Uh, he doesn't think that the return on investment would really be uh, feasible at this uh, at this location. Uh, but certainly that is one of the things that we're going to continue to look at when when we do all of these all of these projects. And I will say that there's actually fifty thousand uh, dollars budgeted. I think it might be in ARPA TID in order to do those types of sustainability or solar solar type type work at the park shelter. Yeah. So. It, it just for the low return on it, I would just think you could spend far less money, plant quite a few more trees, and have a bigger mm -hmm. environmental impact positively. Um, and really, the, the thought the thought is to maintain the theme of of the, the shelter with the the brick siding. Uh, certainly, I'm I'm thinking with the with the bathrooms, they may need to be a little bit bigger uh, with ADA and, and hopefully try to get a little bit more of a, an open air area, uh, but it's really going to, you know, maintain the same same theme, similar to what we did at, at McGaw. So, no, it's, uh, we've been, we've been wanting to get this done for quite some Years. time. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, um, Hillside Heights is, an, you know, one of the original neighborhoods, Tower Hill and all these, they're, 1973 it was built. This one? Yeah. The shelter? Yeah. Is it there? Are, it is going to be a reconstruction, though, not a rehabilitation, right? It's being totally rebuilt. Well, it, it's not going to be leveled. It'll just be renovated, if you would. Okay. But but I'm thinking, you know, I'm, you know similar to, to McGaw, the idea of a potentially an arched, but the, the, the envelope of where, where it's located is generally going to be the same. Can't do much with three hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's slim. Any other and questions? We're thankful, we're thankful for that. Right. No other questions. Ready to vote? Those in favor, say aye. 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 No opposed. The motion carries. All right. <clears throat> so where are we now? We're on six. Right. This is. Oh. Go right ahead. It, and it is a discussion action item, so I, I did want to leave the ability for, for folks to offer uh, some comments. We're working with Park Architecture, which actually Katie is a, a member of that team, uh, and they've put together some conceptual concept plans for the expansion of the pickleball courts at, at uh, McGaw, uh, and included, now not included in this is the lighting. Uh, there, there is planning to be lighting, which... You know, it could be either four or six poles, which I suspect will be on, on, the, on the exterior. Uh, but one of the things that we're correcting, you know, kind of the, the boo-boo that we made last time is in regards to fences uh, in, between, in between courts. Uh, we're, we're looking to include that and, and actually maybe a potential uh, alternate to the bid is to install uh, fencing on the existing eight courts, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, and and what I did do too is I, I copied um, the pickleball advocates that we've been working with to, to gather their comments. Uh, and at some point, I, I do want to reach out or, or just make the neighborhood aware of, of, of what we're what we're doing here. So it's just kind of an update. I'll hold this. You know, this is on a schedule to. You know, get get bid again. This 
uh, later this, this spring and, and hopefully get completed uh, by the end of the year. So that's uh, kind of an update on, on that. I have a question. Sure. Um, sure. It has been pointed out to our group here that the advocates, the Pickleball Association donated a big chunk of money to Oregon, right? Were there, um, can we, got a hat? <laughs> we pass the hat? Pass the hat. Well, I've, I've yeah, I've, I've made them aware that it'd be nice to, to get a, a contribution. Okay. I, and, and, and in fairness, they, you know, they, they promote it. They, they, they use the courts a lot. So I, you know, I, I think it's a great addition to the community. Oh, and, no question. And, and, and they, they do a lot of in-kind in kind work for us. So. They were doing uh, lessons? Well, lessons, lessons, leagues. And uh, they, they put up the leagues. windscreens. They, they've done a lot. And, and they've donated some dollars for paddles, saddles, or whatever it is. So they've, they've given some money. But point, point well taken. Okay. So any other questions? you would like a vote uh no it just, just uh just, just a you know it's a, a discussion potential action on it so you're n we can know is, if there's no major objections right and, and if there's any anything that you notice or want want added i have a question that sure. is worth considering i don't know the answer to it um the space in between the courts left with the trees or shrubs or whatever they're intended to be there my first thought was, oh, let's get some good trees there to provide a little shade. And then my second thought, would um, that create like a maintenance headache for cleaning leaves out of the courts in the fall? Um, so I don't know what the trade-off is for either of those two items, but that's just something to, you know, something to consider one way or the other. It, it, it certainly is a, a, a combination of both, Chris, right? Originally, we we were thinking of, of, of uh, you know, shade structures that are, that are not material. What's that? <laughs> not three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> not trees, uh, but then you know. But certainly, you know, in the interest of of trees and shade and can you know and, and those kinds of things. So this was kind of the the compromise that was uh, suggested. Um, you know, it's you know I think uh, at the end of the day, you know, leaves leaves can be blown out, and you know that's stuff that the pickleball court advocates say. They certainly can can have cleanups and, and those kinds of things. So. Yeah, because I, I would think I won't be around to see it, but the leaves will get trapped inside of those little fenced areas, so it'll be a little bit a bit of work to yeah, move them along. Right, right, right. Anything else? Is that enough for you, Scott? Well, I just this may be a very foolish ahead. question. So, for the positioning. One, I know we did get feedback when these went in that potentially it would have been nicer if they would have been closer to the parking lot just because it was a little bit of a distance. And I know it looks like on the north side there is definitely the elevation change. But would it make sense or do the pickleball advocates have any feedback on is there a benefit to having them all within one enclosure for like tournaments or things like that if it was just extended on and that there was like the built-in fence that already was existing? Yeah, I right, right. Well, yeah, I think I think I think it makes more sense that they continue to be linear, like like they are here. And actually, the, you know, there is proposed a parking lot uh, to the south mm -hmm. um, it, it, because this. And, and actually, to the north, there's an athletic field, and then to the south, there's a big athletic field. And in the middle, it was going to be the pickleball courts, the parking lot, and then uh, potentially a, we did a playground up in the northwest corner. Yep. But then potentially there could be a shelter, which is actually in the CIP to do a shelter and a bathroom on the, the southwest section there. Um, and, and, and actually, another thing that you can kind of see the topography lines. Mm -hmm. what, what we're looking to do is potentially run this pipe, you know, get pipe, because it's an outlet here, to, to run pipe all the way from here 
and then fill this in because then we'd end up with more uh, more flat uh -huh. green space, which would really, I think, and then actually too to do the same thing on the north end to try and gain some more gain some more flat space, if you would, to try and do some landscaping or or other you know other improvements in the area because those those drainage swales are huge and yes. Um, so, so that's what it, well, right, and that's, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, too, we, we eventually are hoping that there's a path that comes through here, goes across, and goes to both the north end, the south end of the, you know, to those, to those athletic, athletic field areas, um, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be, well, and, in the um, chamber, they're they're doing pickleball events, and, and it's really the idea of eight doesn't quite give them enough courts for for those kinds of regional regional tournaments. Uh, but but I think the idea of the you know now thinking allow the, the patio there, you know I think that really gives some connectivity to go to the east, you know where they can come in the patio and kind of. Kind of congregate or gather, and then they can go either east or west. And if they would, you know, that I think that helps decide that to the east is, is the best way to expand. And it looks looks certainly like it'll work well as yeah. as designed. Yeah. You got some pros designing it. There are, yeah, That's great. <laughs> and there's. People out playing pickleball in the oh, tennis courts yeah. and I, where near where I live, and so I'm sure these are starting to pick up too. Yeah. Do you remember when that shelter is currently scheduled for? What year? Uh, Twenty. I don't know what's first, whether it's the playground or whether it's a parking lot or the the shelter. But the mayor put them. It's all within the five year, within our five year CIP. <clears throat> so it's. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. I support this uh, against my dad's uh, judgment. He's a big tennis player, and he's got attention with the pickleball player. Well, and just thinking <laughs> system wide, we yeah. and the city has invested a lot of a lot of dollars into the McKee tennis courts. Yeah, and I don't, so that's going to be kind of our tennis courts yeah. for the for the. For this community, and then these are the pickleball courts. Yeah. Right? I think we can be. And for at least for as long as they last, the Wildwood South has tennis courts, but they're striped for pickleball too. So everybody's having a good old time. There you go. Yeah. That's what parks are for, right? That's right. Okay. No other questions? Thank you. Okay. So we are going to couple, talk about what's couple, next. What's couple, next, Scott? Well, a couple communication items. We did. Um, we received seven proposals for the Arrowhead Playground, and it's currently out for uh, getting votes. Uh, so that'll be coming back in April. Uh, Sunnyside Park lighting update. Uh, I did include in your packet uh, a request from the dog park advocates to do some additional uh, lighting. Uh, they have heard from users. Uh, so the idea is to, to have uh, a light adjacent to where people enter and then a one near the uh, n near the new drinking fountain uh, the dog park advocates have indicated that they're they'll support uh, financially those those um, updates so I wanted to, to share that with you uh, the park and open space plan update that's I'll be going around in March uh, kind of talking to everybody about the plan and Really, and I'm going to preface the, the conversation and, and the idea that this is our, our action item guide. It's kind of our five-year plan. It's not designed to, you know, identify what parkland dedication fees should be and all of those. It'll, it'll provide that idea that that's something that we should, we should look at a little bit closer. Um, but then I'll try to, to target each of the groups that I go and visit what part of the plan might be related to them. So, so I'll be doing that and then we'll, we'll gather some comments uh, and then depending on if there's a lot of comments that we're gonna need to do some, 
some amending to the plan before your final final look. Uh, we are scheduled to look at it in April, uh, but depending on how much feedback and things, we may have to postpone that to to May because uh, we'll kind of staff will take a look at the suggestions and how they might be incorporated into the plan and then bring it back in May. But so that's that's uh, out there. We have nine meetings to go to. That's with okay. This. And, and you know what? It, Overtime. It, <laughs> no, I see it as I see it as my my opportunity to promote the park and rec department, right? And, yeah. And hey, this is what we're doing, and I'm I'm gonna, you know, host report. I'm no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them that, you know what, the, the park system provides a lot of, a lot of, intangible benefit to the community, and, and we, we need some we need some we need some dollars to get this to get it going. No, I. I that's my job to be an advocate for your park, rec, and forestry department, right? Yes. So that's what I will be doing, and I look forward to it, actually. It's, uh, I don't mind. All right, but so we have um, Section 8 is the staff reports. Does anyone have any questions or remarks about that? Uh, future agenda items, what we talked about. Maybe parks and open space plan. Oh yeah, we we'll have we'll have yeah there'll be stuff stuff coming. I don't know off the top of my head, but it always fills up. Yes, well in Stoner Prairie, you know Stoner Prairie is getting ready mm -hmm. is getting ready to get bid. Um, the hub the hub is cooking. So when when will construction documents for Stoner Prairie be done? Soon. Um, we're looking to get that bid. Soon, do you, do you want to look look at them or sure, sure. No, I'd love I'd love you to take a take a peek at them. <laughs> well, we had a couple of things that weren't really correct on our final drawings that mm -hmm. we said we we're going to fix it on the construction what, what documents. Were, what were those? That on the very north side of the park where the neighbors um, are taking care of a little triangle. Right. Right. That that needs to be clean. it's a tiny piece of land and it needs to be cl cleaned up. It's it's included, but I showed the boundaries of it and I made the boundaries too big, so it's a oh, smaller okay. area than I'll, what it was shown uh, on our final. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, uh, I'm gonna make myself a note to. It's if anything Lu else, Lucas to... and Kelly Haberts um, do the little bit of. And what I'll what I'll do is I'll I'll send that to the whole group. I'll send it to the whole group. Uh, once and it gets close. The other one was the the one acre that was the original park attached to Lacey Heights. Um, has a lot of trees in it, and the comment was being made by mostly me at the committee as fill it in more with, with native plants because otherwise you're gonna always continue to be mowing around 25 trees. But it never was shown on the drawings that we were going to do that. It just looks real patchy, and so if they're going to bid, they won't. You know, what are they going to bid on for that acre? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll. As soon as we, um, I'll send them out to everybody for, for, for your, for your thoughts. Yeah, and, and that's and just the single acre that's on the east side of that paved path. We'll, we'll be sure to. It's burned into my memory banks. <laughs> Be sure to let me know when I send it to you. <laughs> Thank you me. very You're much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, announcements. When are the next two meetings? Where did, where did you get there yet? Oh, man, I didn't, uh, I didn't put... I, I, oh, I, man, Patrick. So when are the next two meetings, Patrick? No. Come on. Uh, it's the first Thursday. You, you don't you April. don't bring up a question. Well, the 4th of April, because you've got it on the... Um, Schedule of for so next April, April fourth and May second and May second. <laughs> However, Katie McDonald is leaving, oh. moving to Madison. Congratulations on your move. Thank you. Yeah, but she's got to stay on until her replacements follow. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you still put a final well, forwarding. That's a given. In. That's a given. Thank you for all three, your time. Four, five years to find it. <laughs> <laughs> your, your grandfather did, man. Okay. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. 
now. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's Katie. Yeah. Thank you. We'll miss you. Yeah, I will miss coming. I will miss being a part of this. I have something to mention about the March 12th um, council meeting. There is going to be a recognition for the mayor. Uh, she's being awarded Wisconsin Urban Forestry Council Leadership Award based on the work done by her and others, but she led the charge on the tree preservation ordinance and with the budgeting for the full-time forestry position. Yeah, no, it's really cool. It's yeah. going to be really cool. So, anybody wants to go, they can get a photo op right after they announce it. I'm going to be out of town, but... Just wanted to make sure people knew because it was she did a good thing there. A couple of really important things. That's all I have. So we talked about meetings. Anything anyone else wants to say? Except for motion to adjourn. Nobody wants to go. To adjourn. I'll motion. Okay. I've got the second item. Right. Okay, I'll take it. Do you see what time it is? Yeah. Seven thirteen. Mm -hmm. You know what so, time we started? Oh. Six seventeen. Oh, so nice. the streak continues. Under an hour. Those in favor say aye. 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 We are. Aye. Well, I, should, I should have said that. <laughs> yeah.